cannot believe I'm doing this video. I've never done one of these before and so I hope that you can forgive me for how this is gonna go because it's probably not going to be as professional as I'm hoping it to be. However, I just, I wanted to comment this with you because oh my god, there's so many of them, so many, many, many of them. Hello beautiful bookworms, my name is Katarina and welcome to my channel and today I am going to be talking about something that I don't know if a lot of you know, but some of you might know, particularly the fans of comics and manga might know, that there's something called the Eisner Awards. So the Eisner Awards are kind of like the, let's just say the Oscars for comics, manga series and all of the artistry related um, visual media kind of thing. And this year the nominees for 2022 have already come out. They've come out in a while, but only now that I have time to film this video, so bear with me. Um, but I have seen the list and I have a bunch of the works that are nominated for best. And so I decided to tell you in each category what I have and what I think about it. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to tell you all of the things that are in the categories because most of the works I don't know. And because of that, I'm going to leave a link down below if I remember to do so. The website where I saw the list of all of the nominees so that you guys can, if you've read them, form an opinion by yourselves. If not, you can just follow my opinion on what I've read. And I just want to leave the disclaimer here. I haven't read everything. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. I am just going to talk about what I like or don't like and what I feel about the nominees that I know. Okay, that's going to be it. Let's get into it. So the first category that I see here is best continuing series. And in the middle of lots of series that I'm not following, it appears that something is killing the children is nominated. Now, if you've been here on this channel for a while, you know that I have reached volume four of the trade paperbacks of Something is Killing the Children. This is by James Tynion IV, Wedro de la Dare, and Mikael Mordo, and you know that I love Something is Killing the Children. Also, it actually won the Eisner Awards, no, it was a nominee for the 2020 Best New Series Eisner Awards. So, if it does win, best continuing series, it will be amazing. I love this series, I love their continuing it, I think that is a very, very cool series. You have horror, but you also have like those tropey situations of this girl and she's this hero and there's secret societies and there's monsters and everything and it's just there's mystery, there's horror, there's action and the art style of this is beautiful. The writing of this is really cool and I cannot wait to know more about the world of Something is Killing the Children. So for me, it would be okay if it won the Best Continuing Series. However, just the fact that it's nominated after being nominated for Best New Series, I think it's also great. And if any other of the series are better than this, which I believe it might be possible, I don't know, I haven't read them, then I would be okay with it not winning. Just the fact that it's nominated for me is awesome because I do believe that it should be at least nominated for Best Continuing Series. Now the next category that I see here is Best Limited Series. And for this one, I have two of the nominees and I loved both of the nominees. So I don't know what my thoughts are going to be on this, but two of the nominees are Stray Dogs um, and The Many Deaths of Lila Starr. So Stray Dogs is by, where is the name of these people? It's on the inside, of course. It's by Tony Flex, Trish Forstner, Brad Simpson, and then a bunch of other people. And The Many Deaths of Lila Star is by Ram V and Philippe Andrade, and he's a, a Portuguese uh, inker and painter. So, um, of course, for that alone, because I'm also Portuguese, I'm like, oh, please, this has to win something. But as you're about to find out, The Many Deaths of Lila Star is actually nominated for a bunch of shit. And so between The Many Deaths of Lila Star and Stray Dogs, honestly, I had very emotional and visceral reactions to both of these. I have reviews for both of these that I'm going to leave link up above. But... Uh, since The Many Deaths of Lila Star is nominated for more categories, I know that being Best Limited Series is different from the other categories that is involved and that it's probably better. However, Stray Dogs 
for some stupid reason is not nominated for anything else and i do believe that stray dogs is a fucking masterpiece in horror so i think that for best limited series and disregarding of course all of the other participants that i don't know anything about but i would prefer that stray dogs won this just because i think that first of all horror is a genre that is still very people have a lot of uh, you know beliefs about horror and horror probably most of the time doesn't win a lot of things and so for that alone and because i love the genre i think it should be given a chance but second of all because stray dogs is being like a phenomenon everywhere the art style of this is cute and beautiful but the premise of it is dark and twisted and i love the contrast between this i think that is extremely effective the way that it leads you to care about your main characters which are puppies and it makes you fear for their lives and just follow the story of these puppies. And whilst The Many Deaths of Lila Star is amazing and it's a story about how death um, belongs in life and life belongs in death. Um, and we shouldn't be afraid to live our lives, no matter the cost. I think that because it's nominated for so, so many things that maybe Stray Dogs should have the opportunity to, you know, just get the shot. I don't know. I love them both, so this is very difficult, but I think I would go with Stray Dogs for this one because it's just so fucking impactful. And the Midnight of Lila Star is impactful too. Oh my god, I don't know. You see, they're both so incredibly good, so if you want to read them, read them because they're great. So for best new series, we have, uh, amongst the many nominees, The Nice House on the Lake, also by James Tynion IV, Alvaro Martinez Bueno, and Jordi Belair. And I don't know if I agree with this, let me just explain. The Nice House on the Lake came out, so this first volume, I don't remember the date, but I do believe it was on 2021? I don't know. But my point is, even though it had an hiatus and it has uh, restarted with issue 7 and issue 8, it's not actually a new series. I mean, I don't know what the... Um, what is involved in choosing between the categories and if new series believe it's like a series between a period of X years. And if that's so, then of course, and you know if you've been on this channel, that I love The Nice House on the Lake and I think it's a great representation of horror without the gore, but with cool characters that you can identify with and just with a really awesome mind-fucking mind-bending premise. So I think of course it should be nominated for me, for my personal interests. However, Thinking about the name of the category, I'm like, well, sure, but why the fuck is it for best new series, though? You know what I mean? It's, just, it's a bit confusing, but of course I'm 100% backing this. I just don't know if it's adequate to the category. I don't know. If you know how the category is made, tell me something in the comments down below. And yeah. Now, for best anthology, among a lot of others, we have the Silver Coin Volume 1. And this is by um, all of the names of these fucking people. It's by Michael Walsh, Shipsa Darcy, Kelly Thompson, Ed Brisson, Jeff Lemire, and Michael Walsh. This first volume. And there's more coming out in comic format. And I really want the second trade paperback because, my God, this is going to be amazing. Um, a lot of great authors participate on this. And I have absolutely love how this is an anthology that even though it shows you different sides of a story that has to do with a silver coin that is cursed, it actually gives you the beginning and the present of how the coin is working and what the fuck is going on, but it leaves you with so, so many questions, and in between, it just gives you snippets of people that had the coin and what happened to them, and it's just so horrific, and the colors are just so fucking great that, I mean... I would go for it. Just give best anthology to a horror anthology. Fucking please. Just do it. Have the, co the cojones to do it. Just have the balls. Okay? Just have the balls. Thank you to Matos. I'm saying this in several languages, but just do it. Fucking do it. Also, if you have missed my tone, I am telling you to get this anthology. I really am. Now, next we have Best U.S. Edition of International Material, and we have 
One that I've read but I don't have here is in my boyfriend's house and it is Love Sickness by Junji Ito. I'm going to leave the image here. And then we also have Spy Family, which actually I have here even though I haven't read it, which is like this. Uh, so we have a bunch of other uh, participants. However, I don't fucking believe that anyone can win best edition besides from Junji Ito's editions, because they're all hardcover, they're all fucking beautiful, they're like masterpieces that I would like to frame if they weren't reading material. That's it, I said. In my opinion, stop meowing, kitten. Okay, he just wants to play. So, in my opinion, nothing can beat Junji Ito, nothing. So for best writer, we have among other people the writer of The Many Deaths of Lila Sar, Ram V, and the writer of a bunch of fucking things like Something is Killing the Children and The Nice House on the Lake, which I have here, so I'm going to show, James Tynion IV. I love them both. I really love them both. And I don't know. This is going to be very difficult, and there's other best writers, so it's going to be even more difficult for judges, but between these two... I don't know, I'm loving the mind fuckery of The Nice House on the Lake and I love the simplicity but amazing dynamics of Something is Killing the Children for James Tanya IV. However, Rem V's sensibility in The Many Deaths of Lila Starr, it just won me so much. I, 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 I don't know, I have no fucking idea of who I was going to vote. I might lean towards Rem V, no. No, because I'm forgetting that they're counting all of their works to date. Um, and Jameson IV has more works that I haven't read, and so does Ram V. I don't know. I really don't know, but both of them are so fucking great, in my opinion. Then for Best Writer Artist, we have a bunch of manga nominees that I haven't read and I don't plan to. And then we have Junji Ito. And um, as a fan of Junji Ito that has a fucking playlist reviewing all of his works in English up until now, of course you know who I'm going to say that is the best writer-artist. And he is the best writer-artist, at least from those that I see there. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, but most of them, I don't want to even fucking read them. I, I don't know. If you like the nominees, it's okay. You can like them, it's just my personal opinion. Um, but I think that Shinji is going to win. I'm, I'm very sorry. I, that's how I feel. Then we have Best Penciler, Inker, or Penciler, Inker team, and one of the people that are nominated is Philippe Andrade by The Many Deaths of Lila Star. and I don't know the other people, and I'm not judging their works before I know them, but please, please, first of all, it, it, it's just, ah, I'm gonna show you, it's just so fucking amazing, the art style of this, it, it's just... It resembles India so, so much and the Indian culture and it's just so fucking beautiful all the time. I mean, please give Filipe Andrade the award, please. And, and also because I'm Portuguese, I'm just uh, really wanting that someone that is Portuguese to win this. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but I'm biased. <laughs> but yeah, I would vote for yes. His works are amazing. For the next category, I want to give a disclaimer. I don't have anything with me, but I have read what I'm going to talk to you about. So, for Best Painter and Multimedia Artist on the Interior, um, they are uh, again nominating Sana Takeda from Monstrous. And I haven't been up to date with Monstrous. I have stopped, like, in the very beginning. I have a lot of comics to still read of Monstrous. However, from what I've seen, and I don't know the other nominees, but from what I've seen, if you're not giving this award to Sana Takeda, I mean, what the fuck are you doing? It's one of the best art styles that I've ever seen. It's, just, it's fucking crazy, the detail and the time that it fucking takes her to do that. I mean, just do it. Just give her the award, fucking please, because if not, I mean, what are you doing? And then for best coloring, which is the last one, I think, that I have uh, knowledge of the nominees, uh, is Philippe Andrade and Inez Amar, which are the coloring team of the Many Deaths of Lado Star. And again, again, I fucking don't need to tell you about the colors of this, about the art style of this, about how fucking beautiful this is, 
about how you should want to nominate these people because they are so great, okay? I rest my fucking case. They should win. They should. So that's going to be it for this video. If you know any more of the nominees and you want to talk a little bit about it, please tell me something in the comments down below. If you recommend any other of the nominees for me to read, you think I'm going to enjoy it, or if you recommend it to just the subscribers in here, just tell something down below so that people can see. So that's going to be all for today. If you like this video, leave a like or subscribe and happy readings to you all. Bye.